But so, what I'm going to talk about, and I, I put something in your your O'Flaherty law folders, which is uh, a blog article recently, which is the 11 uh, situations in which you might want to consider talking to your business attorney. And this is kind of the conversation I have with everyone that has an initial consultation with me. Um, I'm the point of first contact for a lot of business owners because really Joe might be the point of first contact. They go to Joe and say, yeah, I'm just planning on starting a corporation. They say, well, you got to get incorporated first before you can open your corporate bank account. And then they come to me and we get their corporation set up and then they can go back to Joe and actually open up their account. Um, so incorporation is the first thing you need to worry about as a business owner. Uh, there's two reasons to incorporate. One is that it's a liability shield. And the other is that you might save on self-employment tax if you're self-employed. And Jack, was this something you were going to talk about too, or? Uh... Um, yeah, you can talk as much, and I'll adjust my conversation. <laughs> All right, so good. don't worry about that. Um, so liability. There's two basic corporate forms that you can be. There's an LLC and a corporation. And for all intents and purposes, for a small business owner, it's really six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. So a lot of people's first question to me is, should I be an LLC or a corporation? Well, with a corporation, you've got a couple more corporate formalities to maintain, and that really boils down to annual meeting minutes. You've got to do meeting first meeting minutes of the shareholders, first meeting minutes of the directors. And what that really looks like is, we prepare a form for you to sign that says this meeting was held if you're a really small business. Now, if you've got a bunch of investors, then we're talking about a little bit of a difference between a corporation and an LLC. Corporations really come in handy if you've got third-party investors that you don't want to have the same voting rights as you as the real entrepreneur. Um, in that case, we'd create two classes of stock, one voting class, one non-voting class. But for most of my clients, that's not really the issue. The issue is, I've got a small business, I'm doing all the work myself, and I might have some employees, and I want to not be personally liable, and I want to save on self-employment tax. And again, you know, six in one hand, half, half a dozen the other. LLCs, you don't have to have the annual meeting minutes, you don't have to have the initial shareholder meeting, meeting minutes, but they're a little bit more expensive to set off uh, in Secretary of State fees. So the Secretary, Secretary of State charges $500 to set up an LLC, $250 for a corporation. But it really is a wash because you're going to be spending a little bit more on attorney fees on the corporations. We've got to do those meeting minutes. So I wouldn't get too hung up on whether you're a corporation or an LLC. You talk to six different attorneys and six different uh, accountants, and you're going to get three different, you know, basically 50 50 will, will tell you, you know, we like corporations, we like LLCs. One thing you should understand, though, is a lot of people ask about LLCs versus S Corps. That's kind of a false question. Uh, an LLC or corporation is what you set up at the Secretary of State level. On the IRS level, you choose to be taxed as an S Corp or not. And I'll go into what that means. Um, so if, if you are just an LLC, you've got pass through taxation, meaning that uh, you're not taxed once on your corporate profits and a second time on your distributions from the corporation. If you're just a regular old corporation, you're taxed twice. You're, you're taxed on the profits that the corporation makes and then you're taxed again when you get a distribution from the corporation. So if I'm a shareholder in Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is going to be taxed as an entity, and then when I take my distributions from my stock that I own, I'm going to get taxed again. We solve that for corporations with an S-Corp election. So if you file an S-Corp election with the IRS, you're saying, I'm a small business, I meet the requirements to be small enough to be an S-Corp, I'm not publicly traded, I've got less than 100 investors. And if you do that, then you turn your corporation that otherwise when you set it up with the Secretary of State would have had double taxation, you turn it into pass-through taxation, just like the LLC already is. But that's not a compelling reason to be an LLC rather than an S-Corp, because you're going to want to file an S-Corp election for your LLC as well. And this is where it gets a little confusing. So a lot of people come to me and they say, S-Corp or LLC. Well, what we usually do is set up an LLC and put an S-Corp tag on it with the IRS. And the reason we do that is if you're an S-Corp, either as an LLC or as a regular old corporation, you save on self-employment tax. And I want to make a distinction between income tax and self-employment tax. Now I'm really going into accounting world, so I apologize, but um, this, is, this is the question that I guess get asked a lot. So you're going to pay income tax no matter what, and there's not much we can do about that other than having a very good accountant. Um, but self-employment tax is a tax that you pay on top of that if you're self-employed. 
And if you don't file an S corp election, and if you're not incorporated, uh, if you're just a if you're just a guy running a business, then you get taxed on everything that you take home from the corporation with self-employment tax. If you incorporate and then file the S corp election, whether you're the LLC or the corporation, then you can pay yourself a reasonable salary. I usually pay myself as a salary what my highest paid attorney is making, because then I can. Anything below that, I'm not going to be able to justify it to the IRS if I get audited. You have to pay yourself a reasonable salary, and you only pay self-employment tax on that salary. And then you take profits from the corporation. Um, any, anything above that salary you take as an owner's draw or profits, and you don't pay self-employment tax on that. So I've had a client that runs an event planning business, and she said, well, there's not really any liability concern. And what I said to her is you should talk to your accountant about whether just the tax savings on self-employment tax would be enough to outweigh the cost of setting up the corporation, and if it is, then it makes sense to, to set up a corporation just for tax purposes. And the rule of thumb is, is if you work with us or if you work with LegalZoom, you don't work with a, a really expensive downtown attorney, it's going to cost you a grand total of about $1,000 to set up the corporation between legal fees and uh, it's like a share of state fees. Well, if you're going to save more than $1,000 on self-employment tax by being incorporated, then you want to incorporate. 